War over Wachovia weighing heavily on shares of City and Wells Fargo today. Our next guest started buying shares of Wachovia aggressively after the City deal was announced. CNBC's Becky Quick is at the Time Warner Center with a first on CNBC interview with famed hedge fund manager William Ackman. Becky. Michelle, thank you very much. As you mentioned, we're here with Bill Ackman, who is the head of the hedge fund Pershing Square Capital Management. He's been here making his speech, uh, speaking to the media, talking about what's going on and uh, what he sees with Wachovia. And we are fortunate to have him first right here on CNBC. Bill, thank you very much for joining us today. Sure. First off, I just want to ask you about the markets. While you were talking, the markets were tanking. Uh, Dow down more than 500 points at several points. Hopefully down. there's not a correlation between them. Yeah, 9,700 and change. What, what do you think is happening here? Uh, I think that it's a it's really a crisis of confidence. I think people have lost confidence in the market generally. I think we're beyond fundamentals at this point in time. Uh, crisis of confidence because of what the government's been doing or in spite of it? I think just uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. You hear of banks failing. You know, people are asking, where can I, where's my money safe? Um, and, uh, you know, worries about who's next. You are a huge... Uh, shareholder in Wachovia. You've been buying up over the last week or so. Uh, how many shares do you own right now? About 170 million. Okay, and you started buying very aggressively. You were saying earlier after the after deal, the city deal was announced. After the city deal was announced, what mm -hmm. did you see? Well, what was interesting is that uh, City was buying the subsidiary, but assuming the holding company liabilities. Very unusual transaction. And what was left at the holding company we thought was quite interesting. Uh, what's left is Wachovia Securities, AG Edwards. Evergreen Asset Management. We think a big pile of cash, and as a result of the transaction, some very interesting tax attributes are created, uh, meaning tax losses as a result of the sale at a bargain price, if you will, of the bank subsidiary. And those tax losses can be carried back, recover, we think, seven and a half billion dollars of cash taxes that were paid over the last two years, and they can also be carried forward to shelter losses. Uh, and so a very interesting, unusual uh, company but very little disclosure. The company only put out a press release with one line describing the deal terms, and we've had to really sleuth around to figure out what's going on. But by your best guesses with the sleuthing, what, what do you think these shares are worth? Uh, a lot more than uh, even where they trade now. Um, you know, certainly more than we paid originally. Um, our estimate of value on the low side is around $8 a share, and depending on how much cash is left at the holding company, it could be a, a much higher number. What, what did you think when Wells Fargo came in with the surprise deal on Friday morning? It was, you know, it was, it was good for us in the sense that we now had some certainty about what was going to happen on the downside. I mean, I think our downside case is that we become a shareholder of Wells Fargo, a very well-run uh, franchise, and our upside is there's an alternative proposal on, on better terms. Do you see a, a, a deal or, or some sort of bidding war breaking out? Sheila Bear, I should mention, while you were talking before, came out and made some comments that she expects to see a deal that gets done today. Uh, that would be great. I mean, I think the markets need certainty. Uh, I think actually it's a positive for the market. You have two financial institutions competing to buy an institution that uh, effectively you know, became insolvent. Uh, that, to me, is an indication that you know there's hope for banking in America. I, I'm actually an optimist, and I didn't mean to begin the conversation uh, pessimistically. Um, you know, there's, I'm saying that people are generally losing confidence, but I think it's one of the great opportunities I've seen in my career uh, to make investments, and we're putting large amounts of capital to work today. Besides what you've been doing with Wachovia? Absolutely. Where, where else are you investing? Uh, I can't tell you what we're buying, um, but we're buying, I think, great businesses at prices we never expected to be able to buy businesses of this quality at. Are you buying in the public market? And yes. Yeah, and we only, we only operate in the public market. Okay. So you're buying those, and can you quantify in what types of companies? Are you talking industrials? Are you talking consumer products? Are you talking retailers like you've done with Target? You know, this, I, the nature of this company, I, I don't want to give much away. Um, okay. There's a particular company that we have been buying, uh, and uh, you know, we've invested in two financial service companies in the last two weeks, uh, AIG and Wachovia. Right. Um, so, you know, we do think that doesn't mean the stock market can't go down more, but we think based on the price we've paid over the next three, four, five years, we'll do extremely well. Let's go back to Wachovia for a moment. The, the deal that's being talked about, or at least speculated on this morning, is there'll be some sort of King Solomon type deal where they split this company in half. Would yes. you be happy with something like that? I, I think I'm happy with whatever the best outcome is for shareholders, uh, and I think that's also going to be an outcome that's going to be very good for employees, um, so I think, and, and for the markets generally. You know, the deal that we think might be the compromise deal is that Citi buys the banking subsidiaries, Wells Fargo buys the parent company, gets the tax attributes, gets AG Edwards, gets Wachovia Securities, and then maybe there's a little bit of trading in terms of branches. You know, maybe there's some, I'm sure there's some branches that Citi doesn't want, and maybe those are good for Wells, and you know, vice versa. So I think there's an opportunity for a deal to get made that makes sense. And I'm sure the government wants it done in the worst way. Have you spoken with any of the parties involved from the FDIC to Wachovia to Wells Fargo Citigroup? I'd rather not comment.
Okay. Yeah. We'll take it at that. At the end of the day, you think you'd be happy with the deal, or you think the deal will be worth more than the $7 a share that we heard on Friday? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bill, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, we will send it back to you in the studio, folks. Thank you very much. And we'll be speaking more with Bill off camera for taped interview. We'll have that coming up on Squawk Box tomorrow. But again, uh, we've been speaking with Bill Ackman, and he's going to be telling us more about what he thinks about Wachovia.